Hey guys, welcome back to Inchworm Gardens. On today's variety spotlight, we're going to be taking a look at a very unique and slightly hazardous plant called the lychee tomato. As you can see, I have this growing on the side of my house and it's for good reason. Let's take a closer look. Another popular name for this plant is the Morel de Balbes, which is a French name. Now this plant actually originates from South America, but the first guy to scientifically describe the plant was a French botanist. So it got that name. Morel refers to the nightshade family. Balbus is of the Spanish origin. Now uh, here's another interesting factoid. This is from Baker Creek Seeds, where I got these seeds from. They say that in 1896, this was first uh, documented in a seed catalog, the Wilson Seed Catalog in 1896. It was this great plant that could be used many uses uh, in pies and jams and jellies. Also said that in Fiji, it was used as a condiment for a cannibal's meal of human flesh. Interesting. Another thing to mention, it's probably obvious from looking at the plant, but this is not a true tomato. It is in the nightshade family, so it's a relative of the tomato, potato, peppers, but it is something completely different. Now it does grow very similarly to a tomato, so uh, any, you know, any growing uh, habits that you would normally do for your tomatoes, then you can do for this plant and it grows just fine. Now of course the one big notable difference of this plant is it is covered in very very painful little spikes. They're like thorns, they're tec technically called prickles, but they are very sharp and they are covered on every piece of fruit, every stem, every underside of the leaf. This thing is designed to poke you and that is actually a common use for it. It's used as a hedge. You can put it around your garden to keep animals out, to keep your neighbors out, whatever you want. That is why I have this growing on the side of my house because I don't want my kids to get poked by them. Now another difference is that the um, the flowers are very similar to eggplants. You see they have these really pretty white flowers with the yellow middle. It's kind of hot right now so they're a little bit folded up but each morning they open and they're actually very pretty. They kind of remind me of like a fried egg. So that's the flower. There's the leaf. And let's take a look at a little fruit cluster. So there you go. Ripens very similar to the tomato. And there's a look at the ripe fruit. This little calyx does open and start to dry out when the fruit is ripe. So this guy is ready to go. That's the one we'll be tasting today. And it goes from a green to kind of like an orange, a yellow, then to an orange, and then it gets that nice dark red when it's ready. So I have it just staked to a couple bamboo stakes and that's enough for it. Because the fruit is not so heavy, it doesn't get weighed down. So even though this branch over here is like pretty far, just like hanging out here and not supported, it's not affecting the plant too much because it's pretty light. This plant is pretty hardcore actually, not only the way that it looks, but it's actually very tough because it is naturally disease and pest resistant. It actually has a compound inside the leaves and the stems called solisodine, which is a natural uh, disease and pest deterrent. Scientists are actually trying to concentrate that chemical and make a natural like a pesticide using that solisodine. So this actually has some cool potential future uses for natural bug repellent. So you're not going to see a lot of disease, you're not going to see a lot of pest pressure, which is pretty awesome. But one thing to note that that does not apply to tomato hornworms and potato beetles. They, I guess, don't mind that solisodine. They will eat it up. I'm surprised they would still, with those thorns, I would think that would poke their soft little bellies, but apparently the hornworms will still get this plant, so keep an eye out for that. But, I mean, it's pretty badass. Also, it's frost tolerant down to 25 degrees Fahrenheit. Tomatoes, they totally wimp out when it freezes. Tomatoes are wiped out, they're done. This guy can actually tolerate a frost. If you're in a warmer climate, it can actually overwinter and become a perennial, so it's a, it's a very tough plant. It's an easy one to grow. But, like always, comes down, how does this thing taste? Let's pick one of these ripe berries and cut it open.
So first thing you can see, there's quite a lot of seeds. It's kind of similar to a ground cherry. It's got a lot of those little flat, crunchy seeds in there. The inside's kind of yellow. Looks pretty meaty. So there you go, lychee tomato. Let's give it a little taste test. Hmm. So the seeds are crunchy. It's a little bit sweet. Kind of has almost a watermelon flavor to me. It's like a blueberry. It's it's very interesting. It's a not super intense flavor, but it's mild. It's sweet. It's pretty nice. Yeah, I like that. So this other half I'm gonna have to give to my son Wesley because he very patiently left this on the plant for me so I could make this video. So Wesley, do you want to try a bite of this? Ow. What do you think? <laughs> it's good. It, it's tasty. Like I said, it's not amazing, but it's a nice little fruit. You know, we have it growing by the side of our house, so we go to take the trash out, pick one, eat it. Yeah, it's good. The other thing I want to mention about this plant is that it does need, you need two plants to cross-pollinate. It's not self-fertile. So if you're only growing one, there's a chance you won't get any fruit. So grow two plants, they'll cross-pollinate, you get fruit. And uh, yeah, that's good stuff. All right, guys, that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching. That was the lychee tomato. I got these seeds from Baker Creek. So give it a try. Let me know what you think. Catch you on the next one.